Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Yesterday, the 12th of June, was uh, the day of Russia, the Russian National Day, equivalent to the U.S. July 4th, the French July 14th, and so on down the line. A very nice reception at the Russian embassy. Just two things to note. The churls, the ill-bred, dishonorable churls of the State Department did not send, as far as I could see, anybody there to uh, to congratulate Russia. Mm. And uh, the D.C. police let a bunch of pro-Ukrainian demonstrators get very close to the door. And these these characters had the gall to say if you were going into the Russian reception, you were a fascist. How about that? The pot calling the kettle black. Not only are they fascists, they're actually Nazis. Forget about fascists. The people supporting the uh, right sector and so forth in Ukraine uh, qualify as absolute neo-Nazis. So I don't see what uh, happens here with the D.C. Police Department. We'll be looking into that. The other thing I would mention, take a look at C-SPAN. I, my research indicates that uh, that uh, lecture that I did at the National Press Club September of last year is now the most popular Civil War item in the C-SPAN video library going back to 2001. The only, the only one in the entire history of C-SPAN, the only uh, item which seems to have more um, views than my lecture is something by old uh, Shelby Foote from 2001, which was an in-depth. They gave him the whole afternoon, and he gets to spin out some very interesting tales. But uh, other than that, uh, mine is uh, number one. And, of course, once mine is up there for 12 or 13 or 14 years, maybe I'll be uh, closer within striking distance of uh, of Shelby Foote. So um, certainly as far as the sesquicentennial is concerned, I'm a, <laughs> I have to uh, console um, Doris Kearns Goodwin and James McPherson and many others that uh, I am the most watched Civil War scholar and lecturer on C-SPAN. So do take a look. Make that uh, number go up. But but now back to the Iraqi uh, front. You get the idea. If U.S. airstrikes are ordered, then uh, that will be allow the U.S. to establish air superiority over northern Iraq. That will mean no more logistical support flights from Iran into Syria. And uh, the interesting thing is, at the height of the crisis on Thursday, yesterday, we had the White House saying, none of this will interfere with our plans to help the moderate opposition in Syria. The moderate opposition is gone. As far as I can see, the Free Syrian Army has just about ceased to exist. Many of them have fled. Some of them are in Sweden. There is no more Free Syrian Army on the ground. General um, Idris seems to have, uh, have fled. He's apparently in hiding. Uh, so uh, who are they giving these weapons to? It's obvious they're giving them to these uh, crazies, and they're doing it with the cooperation of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Farid Zakaria today commenting on uh, uh, the speech by Obama. It says, oh, we're going to have a situation where the U.S. will be functioning as the air support for the Iranian Quds Force. Well, Farid, maybe you didn't notice, but your proposal for Syria was that the U.S. Air Force would have been the air support for al-Qaeda. So I think we're rather better off being the air support for Iran, if it comes to that, which I hope it doesn't, which I hope it doesn't. But uh, just to follow his paradox to its idiotic uh, conclusion. So all of this prepares new moves that are anti-Iran, anti-Syria, and with the booty, money, and goods, uh, military equipment, the uh, ISIS can transfer those back into Syria and try to mount something perhaps against uh, Assad. Otherwise, Assad is triumphal. Assad has run a successful election that compares quite favorably with elections in Afghanistan or in Ukraine or anywhere else in terms of turnout and the number of votes that he got with the honesty and actual uh, independence of the opposition candidate, all of that. Uh, seems to uh, reflect very well on Assad. So Assad goes from strength to strength, and this is a desperate, desperate move to try to cut it off. Also notice, this ISIS has been based in southern Turkey, and one of the things we pointed to last year with the Ghouta chemical, fake chemical warfare scare, was that what had probably happened was that a force from ISIS 
had crossed out of Turkey and attacked the Syrian province and city of Latakia or Latakia uh, over there in uh, northwest Syria. After that, this ISIS force appears to have been transferred across southern Turkey and then into this area of Raqqa, Raqqa being the far northeast province of Syria. Uh, so you get the idea. We call for no bombing, stay out of this. Rather, tell the Saudis and the CIA and the French and the Turks to stop doing this. Just stop it, right? Stop it. That's, that would be the right thing from Obama. Now, Concerning McCain, McCain shows that not only a coup uh, in Iraq, right, right, toppling Maliki and bringing on Alawi and a group of Western puppets, that is part of the deal over there. How about a coup here in the U.S.? The coup faction, we know who they are, right? It's always Petraeus, 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 embodies Bonapartism, coup, putsch, you name it, in the U.S. And we know that group around Kerry, Samantha Power, have called in Petraeus and General Keene from the Washington Post of some weeks ago to try to find ways to attack Assad. Looks like we're seeing one such way right now. So McCain yesterday, in a rating speech on the Senate floor, McCain says, first of all, fire Dempsey. Yeah, Dempsey is Obama's hand-picked uh, general. Right? He's the general who protects Obama from the uh, insubordinate putschist uh, officer corps we seem to be developing, or factions thereof. He wants Dempsey out. McCain says, Obama, fire your entire national security team and bring in who? Bring in Petraeus, General Keene, the two warmongers that are already working with Kerry and Samantha Power. Petraeus and General Keene. General Keene, of course, the uh, guy from the Institute for the Study of War. And once we've said these names... Petraeus and Keene, in particular, as well as McChrystal, are heavily implicated with the Kagan family neocon warmonger network that includes Newland, but also Frederick Kagan and Kimberly Kagan. Kim Kagan, we saw her on television this week, a somewhat uh, uh, disturbed television presence, but that's another story. And McCain wants Monster Mattis, a, uh, a well-known... Uh, well, uh, a militarist, I guess we can say, is the nicest thing we can say. So McCain says, get Dempsey out, fire everybody, fire, I guess he means Kerry and Rice. Some of these should be fired, but not in the way that McCain says. And then he says, bring in the victorious generals, the people who know what to do, Petraeus, Mattis, and Keene. And he also wants to bring in Ryan Crocker of the State Department. So that would... uh essentially be the coup that I've been warning of, right? The whole business with Bergdahl was to soften up Obama for this stuff. Because these characters, if you replace everybody around Obama and control the options, then you control Obama. So also think about the OAS against De Gaulle at the end of the Algerian War. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio.